Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about square roots. Now before we get really good at square roots, the easiest thing to do is um, to make a list of perfect squares. So I've started a list here. Um, we have 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and I would make this list all the way up to about at least 15 squared. So so that you have something in front of you and you can be memorizing those. Those are the ones that you need to know pretty much off the top of your head. Now once you understand um, the, the perfect squares then you can go backwards. So for instance the backwards of squaring or the opposite of squaring something would be to take the square root. So the square root of 1 would equal 1 the square root of 4 would equal 2, the square root of 9 would equal 3, the square root of 16 would equal 4, and so on and so forth. So again, you might want to make yourself um, a list of these square roots also as you go. I would just kind of keep them in a line on a piece of paper. Um, now, there's a couple of things that we need to talk about before we actually get into working problems. There is such a thing as a principal square root, and we didn't really, I didn't really define it here in my notes um, or anything like that, but uh, we, need, we do need to talk about it. A principal square root is really the positive square root. And any time that you see this symbol, this radical symbol, that's what that is, a radical, then, um, for instance, if you see the square root of um, 25, if this is the problem that's presented to you, then that would be, the answer would be 5, because you have to kind of think backwards. What do you have to square in order to get 25? And that would be a 5. Now, later on, when we're working equations and things, um, we're going to end up with problems that look something similar to this. And in this case, we're saying, what do you have to square to get 25? Well, in this case, our answer would actually be 5 or negative 5. Because if you think about it, if you square a 5, you get 25. Or if you square a negative 5, you also get 25. So this is a difference between when you're just asked, what is the square root? and whenever you're presented with the radical symbol itself. So the radical symbol itself is the principal square root, meaning they only want the positive. Um, any other time you're going to have to think about the possibility of positive and negative. So we'll do some problems with this here in just a minute and we'll see how all this works together.